just an overview of what I did today in homeschool with my daughter on April 24th. So we started like we do every day. We did our calendar and then we did our daily work binder. This is our daily work binder. She uh, ordered the days of the week, the months of the year. And then a new goal that I've introduced is practice writing the date. So I found this template on Teachers Pay Teachers and every day I print it out. And then she practices writing what is the month, what is the day, and what is the year. And then for the date down here, I keep the date cards aside. And these date cards are just from her um, pocket wall calendar. I found this on Amazon. And so every day when we're working on writing the date, I put the date in front of her after she d writes out um, the month, day, and year. And then I'll ask her, Layla, what is the date today? And then she's got to find it here and circle it. Okay, and then she'll take her card when she's done that and she'll add it to her to her calendar her pocket calendar okay and then once we're done with the date we've started working on time so i'll show her my watch which is digital and then she just copies what the current time is usually we do homeschool in the afternoon after lunch so it's always p.m and i just tell her how it's afternoon it's after 12 so it's p.m Okay, and then we're not doing this part. This is writing the date in numeral form. We're not doing that right now. We're just practice on actually writing out the month, day, year, and then finding the date. Another new goal that I've set for her is, uh, well, not really a new goal. We've been working on sight words since the beginning of homeschool, but this is a new way I've decided to do it. I call it words of the week or wow for short. And so every week I'm going to pick like two or three words to focus on. For sight words now we're doing a lot of pronouns in language so I've chosen her and his and we're reviewing it so before we did he and she and it um, and they and she already knows he and she so now we're moving on to her and his uh, and reviewing it and so sometimes the words of the week turn into words of the month depending how long I need to stay on the same words for so this is like our second week working on her and his if i have to work on it again next week then i will so it just really depends on how long it takes her to recognize the words so words of the week and then for language uh, we are on lesson six of our spectrum series workbook today we practice writing the upper and lowercase q she did the activity we talked about what sound the q makes what letter does queen and quilt start with um, and another goal i've set for her is to practice writing her last name she already knows how to write her first name now i'm trying to get her in the habit of writing her last name as well okay so that was language writing and then again for our daily worksheet we worked again on the sight words her and his um, and she, I just had her match it. So we talked about her umbrella and she matched it. His umbrella and she matched it and reread it as she, before she matched. And then I would go back and I would say, Layla, she's a girl. So this is her. And then I try to have her read the second word. And what I do for that is I just point to the word and the picture. And then she makes the connection umbrella. And then I would go, this is his and then she would say umbrella. This is his, and then she would say bike. And that's sort of how we're working on reading right now. Um, but the focus with this worksheet was working on her and his and understanding that she's a girl, so it's her umbrella. He's a boy, so it's his umbrella. And that's what we did today for our daily work. For math, we did our counting from the search and find book. Um, I did a video um, previously on I believe what a, it was my video on what we did for Easter theme and this was part of it um, so again you can see I'm making it a habit of getting her to write first and last name and we've been working through this book every day for math and we do two pages a day so both sides okay so this is all she's done so far every day we just work away at it and this is good for counting um, and today we did this these two pages so find one four leaf clover she circled a three leaf clover but as long as she f gets the right amount 
I'm just going to use it more to focus on counting. This was very overwhelming for her because they all, they all look so much alike. So I wasn't picky about it. And then on this side, find four chipmunks. And then the four chipmunks she has to find are down here. And she did really good with that one. She found the four. And so every day that's what we're doing from this book for math, for counting. Another thing we did for math, we worked on big and small. So these task cards, again, are from Teachers Pay Teachers. I laminated them so they're dry erase. I only put one in front of her at a time. And what I do is I'll say to her, Layla, can you find me the small umbrella? And when I say small, I will point to small because I want her to start getting used to recognizing those keywords. Okay, so same thing with this one. Put it in front of her. Can you find the big acorn? And she'll circle the big acorn. Even though it says find the big one, find the small one, but I never say it like that. I'm very specific about find the big acorn, find the small umbrella, find the small strawberry, find the big tree. Okay, and that's just good because it gives her more practice with, you know, word and letter recognition. Another thing we did for math quickly was just patterning. Today we did AAB pattern. This is just our pattern strips that we use sometimes. Again, teachers pay teachers. Uh, and so we go through it first. So I said, look, Layla, orange, orange, yellow, orange. What comes after orange? And she was going to put yellow. So then what I did was I went back and I physically circled the oranges to show her that there's two oranges before yellow. So I said, look, Layla, one orange, two orange one orange what comes after orange and then she got it and said orange and then she continued and put yellow okay and she did great on that after i showed her with the circles so that's what we did for the patterns today um for writing today um i got this sight word practice book on amazon as well it's called um learning sight words by pretty learning and today we did the word dad. So what I have her do when we work on this book is first I ask her to type it for me on her pro to go because typing is another skill I want her to work on. So she'll type it for me and I'll ask her what is the word and she'll say dad. Then she practices writing and tracing it. We read the sentence together. She has to point as I read. And then because we've been working on middle sounds, I just asked her to circle the middle sound in dad. Okay, so that's what we did today for writing, for sight words. Um, for our themed activity, so we're working on spring as the theme, we did dress for spring. So I put here the spring card, I put the spring background, and I have a cutout of a girl and a boy. This is all from Teachers Pay Teachers as well. It's all one package. I printed everything and laminated it. So now she, we just talk about what kind of things we wear in the springtime. So um, I give her some options here, different options. So there's, we have like a couple different sweaters. There's like a sweater dress, some accessories for the hair. I even put some rain clothes out if she, we wanted to work on you know, dressing for the rainy weather because today was actually raining, but she didn't want to do dress for the rain. She just wanted to do dress for spring. So she dressed up the girl and she dressed up the boy. Uh, she didn't put a shirt on either of them. This is a struggle. This is something we're working on. I tried to show her that you have to put a shirt on under the vest and the overalls, but she was refusing. Um, but other than that, she did pretty good. So pants, socks, shoes, um, and then she did the accessories as well. When we finished with this, I always ask her to go on her iPad. And I'll ask her, what is she wearing? And then she'll t tell me on her iPad, on her protocol, everything she's wearing. So pants, vest, shoes, socks, bow. And then same thing with him. I'll ask, what is he wearing for spring? And then she'll say, shoes, overalls, hat. Okay. And so that's what we did for the theme activity. So dress for the weather. And I do make sure to only have um, spring-related options because if I don't, if I give her just random options, she will insist on putting like a dress on her and shorts on him 
Even if it was winter time, she would do that. And I really need her to understand how we dress appropriately for the seasons and the weather. Okay, so that's why there's only a few options here and they're all spring related. So that's how we work on dressing appropriately for the season and the weather. And then finally, our last activity was a really fun one. We did Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. I found these at Dollarama. They were five bucks a piece. Okay, I got both. And we used this again to work on pronouns. So like his and her, because that's our sight words. So she built them herself. That's what it looks like. Um, I took off a few pieces just to show you. But what I do is I keep the pieces to myself and I give her only the head, right? The base. So then what I do is, and this is a strategy we use in speech therapy, where you keep the pieces and then I'll give her two options at a time and ask her, do you want to put her hat on first or do you want to put on her nose? Okay, and she'll tell me nose or hat. If she says nose, then I'll give her the nose and then she puts, and then she can put the nose on. Okay, um, so this is a strategy we use in speech and it's just a way to get her to communicate and interact with me. And so again, and I did that for all of them, right? So like I would hold on, give her the eyes and the lips and I would say, should we put on her eyes or her lips? And she would tell me, and then I would give it to her and she would put it on. At the end, when she was done building it, um, that's when we worked on his and her. So for example, I would ask her, what color is his hat? And the expectation is that she would say blue because I said his hat, which means the boy, so it's blue. And then if I said, what color is her hat, she would say green because her hat is green. She's the girl, her hat is green. Um, and then I did it again with the nose. If I said, what color is his nose? The expectation is she would say red because I said his. But if I said, what color is her nose? The expectation is she would say pink because I said her nose. Okay. And I did that with all of pretty much the parts. What color is uh, her feet, she would have to say yellow because I said her. What color is his feet? She would have to say orange because I said his. And so that was just a way of getting her to work on his and her and understanding that if I say his, I'm talking about Mr. Potato Head the boy. If I say her, I'm asking about Mrs. Potato Head the girl. And that was just a fun way to work on his and her today. And then we're going to use these again, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, when we work on body parts in the future. Okay, but she really loves that. I try to do as much of these hands-on interactive activities as I can for her. So just to make it more engaging and to push more on the verbal communication and to, you know, just to be more interactive with her. And she really enjoys it. So that's it. That's what we did today. Just thought I'd share.